Hi friends! So if you've taken a look at the title of this video, no you are not dreaming. We are finally doing my most requested, most anticipated, most promised video since I started YouTube. I probably thought it was never going to happen, but you've lived to see the day. We are finally sitting down and doing this thing. This video is going to be all about my makeup career, where I started, how I got to where I'm at now, what I want to be doing in the future, all of my work experience up until this point, and then I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions that you guys have sent me over the last year which I have compiled into a huge list. To be honest the list actually wasn't that big because a lot of your questions were repeat questions. As a forewarning to anybody who doesn't enjoy long videos, this video is definitely not for you. But for those of you who are into that kind of thing and are curious, I would suggest to get up right now, go get yourself a beverage, some kind of sandwich or snack, lock yourself in because this is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty long. Another thing I want to mention is I'm not one to really sugarcoat things or embellish. I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you guys because when I first started out I had zero guidance, nobody helped me, I had no direction and I went through a lot of career turbulence, ups and downs, trial and error, and I've learned from it so although I'm not an expert, I'm not a career counselor, I'm not like the mecca of beauty industry knowledge, I do think some of my experience might help at least one of you. And even if one of you gets something out of this video then my job here is done. Also these filming lights get super hot. I basically roast here like a little piece of bacon so I've left my window open so if you hear any sort of ambulances or city noise I apologize. Before I get into the questions and answers portion of this video I think I'm just gonna sort of tell you my story because I think about 50% of those questions will be answered in me just narrating where it all began and where it is now. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to start in high school. Judging by the emails that I've received, many of you are in high school and you're a little bit confused on what to do with your career, what path to take, you're nervous about college, what your parents might think, etc, etc. So I think this is going to be a really good place for us to start. So let's take a little trip down memory lane to awkward high school me. To be honest, I'm the same person that I was in high school except I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser. In high school, I was pretty creative. I really, really liked writing. I liked reading. I loved English courses, drawing, acting, pretty much anything creative that forced me to use the creative side of my brain, if that's even a thing. I liked languages. I did not like numbers, so math was definitely not my thing. I was super outgoing. I was a people person. I was really a little bit of a shithead because I always found comedy in everything, and I think that mindset is really what got me through high school because I didn't really like high school and I was counting down the days until I graduated. So leading up to graduation, most of my friends had applied to colleges. They kind of knew what they were doing. Most of them applied to college and took like general studies, which is just a little bit of everything. And I did not apply to college because I felt unprepared and I wasn't ready to apply for anything because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I wanted to be. And I just felt like everything was really rushed and I just needed a minute to think about it. So high school happens. I did very well in high school. I had no plan after high school which leads to how my parents felt about that at the time. So if you guys are new here, I am Romanian and I was born in Romania and I moved here when I was eight years old. This means that I have immigrant parents. For all of my immigrants out there, you guys know that the expectation when it comes to a career is significantly higher than those who are not immigrants. You can only imagine the horror when my parents found out that I hadn't applied for any colleges and I really had no plan. I've always been the kind of kid who just did things at my own pace, even if it got me into shit, I just... I'm an Aries. I'm stubborn. I've got my little horns. Nobody can tell me what to do. I do what I want and it is what it is. So the time came, they were just kind of like, what the hell were you thinking? You don't even apply for anything. What are you gonna do? Just sit at home and not do anything? And in my little head, I was like, no, I'm gonna be an adult and like work for a bit, figure it out and then go to school. What's the big deal? Well, apparently it was quite a big deal. So they basically forced me to figure it out on the spot and apply for something before September rolled around. So I just sort of sat there, panicked a little bit, just brainstormed what what do I like doing? I have a big mouth. I love talking. I love being around people. I like media. Broadcast journalism. I don't know why, but that's what I chose. So I took a year of broadcast journalism, I took some radio courses, I did some creative writing, and after that year of basically sitting in front of a teleprompter having it spew words at me and forcing me to say what was on it, I realized that was not my forte. It would have been awesome to be a news anchor or be on an entertainment show 
or do all of that kind of stuff, but I'm just not the type of person who likes to be told what to say, when to say it, how to say it. So I just sort of took a step back and I was like, all right, this isn't for me. Being on YouTube and doing this is very different from being in front of a camera that's basically dictating what you need to say. YouTube, I run my own show, I say what I want, I'm myself. I just kind of do my own thing and it's a lot more natural for me. So I threw in the towel and then I was back to the drawing board. And then I kind of started digging really deep and sort of thinking about what I liked doing growing up. So when I was very little, I used to love drawing outfits. I absolutely loved making little clothes for my Barbies. I used to sew them by hand. I used to have little sketches. I also remembered as a child, I was very into makeup and hair. I completely cleaned my mom's makeup collection out at about age five. I used to go to bed with hot rollers in my hair every single night from ages three to six. And it just all sort of started making sense to me and I thought, okay, well maybe I kind of want to do this for a living. Maybe I want to be a makeup artist. Now, again, with the whole immigrant parent thing, to go to them and to tell them that I want to be a makeup artist when all they've ever dreamed of is to hear lawyer, doctor, accountant, dentist, pretty much anything that's the opposite of everything I've ever wanted to do. It was a little bit tough and a little bit nerve wracking on how I'm going to sell them on this. But if there's a will, there's a way. And I'm mentioning this portion of the story because a lot a lot of you that are in high school have emailed me and told me that you're a little bit nervous going to your parents and telling them that you want to be a makeup artist because they don't know how you can make money doing this. So I basically made a little sales presentation as to why I wanted to be a makeup artist, why they should support me in this decision, and what I plan to do with myself afterwards. And of course they were not into it and they were just kind of like, makeup? How does that make money? But eventually I sort of massaged the situation and they came around maybe like 20%, enough to support what I was doing and to help me through my education. Now, when I made the decision to go to makeup school, I also made the decision to further my education once I was done makeup school. From the second that I decided that I wanted to be a makeup artist, I also knew that I wanted to understand the business side of things. I wanted to understand marketing. I wanted to understand product development. I wanted to understand the backstage stuff that we don't see as consumers. So I made a deal with them and I said, listen, if I go to makeup school, I will become a makeup artist but I'm also going to go back to school and I'm going to further my education and I'm going to understand the entire makeup industry as a whole. I really wanted to challenge myself, I wanted to differentiate myself from other makeup artists and I wanted to have a little bit of an edge. So I did 10 months of makeup school, I actually really excelled at TV and film and special effects and although you guys only see beauty stuff on my channel, I'm actually really into special effects and blood, gore, fantasy, which I actually need to do more of to be honest. Anyway, so I excelled at that and and I had thought to myself, okay, well maybe I want to get into like the movie industry or TV and film. Well, it's not that easy to do that, especially in Vancouver, unless you know somebody or unless you volunteer for a very long time. It's all about who you know, and at that point, I think I was like 19 or 20, and I knew nobody. So I put that dream on the back burner, and I specialized in bridal, glamour, fashion, beauty. So after I finished makeup school, I think I freelanced and worked in retail for about a year. Then I decided I was going to go back to school. I enrolled to BCIT, which is a technical school here in Vancouver. I did a two-year marketing communications program. It was the hardest two years of my entire existence, but I would do it all over again because it totally changed my life. And throughout my entire time at BCIT, I was still working in retail, I was still freelancing, so my life was completely jam-packed. The first year of BCIT was kind of like academic hell. I would describe it as Satan sitting in his fiery office designing this horrendous program and I think the reason it was so hard is because they wanted to weave out the weak ones and see who would rise on top. It was like the Hunger Games of academics. Survival of the fittest. So I made it through first year and I was shocked that I made it because there were many times where I wanted to just drive my car into a ditch but I made it. Second year was a little bit more specific to communications and we were given the opportunity to intern for a company. So they gave us like a list of companies that were looking for interns. There were ad agencies, there were companies that had marketing departments, communications companies, etc, etc. And amongst the pile of internships, I noticed one internship that was in the beauty industry that was product development for a small company and it was the only one that I applied to. So this shows my personality again. There's all these internships, I apply for one. I didn't apply for other ones, so basically if I didn't get this one, I'd be completely screwed in second year. But I was like, I want you and I'm gonna have you. So I interviewed for the internship, and you know your girl got it. 
and the second half of second year I interned there three times a week. I continued to work in retail, I continued to freelance, and I continued to go to school. During my internship I met a really awesome girl. She was the brand manager at the time and she taught me everything I know about product development and if you guys are unfamiliar with product development it basically means what it says developing products. So anything from the idea to actually manufacturing the product to actually getting it onto the shelves. Dealing with factories, dealing with costing, dealing with negotiating, packaging, everything that you see in one product I learned how to make it from scratch which is pretty dope so she taught me everything she could in the matter of three or four months and after I finished my internship and after I graduated they hired me on full-time because I guess they fell in love with me so I worked there for almost a year I think and then my contract was up so I went back to freelancing and retail now a big reason why I even got the internship to begin with was because of my retail experience so it's interesting how all of these things sort of come together. I was the only one that had retail, freelance, and makeup artistry experience, so obviously I had a passion for it. Had I not worked in retail, who knows if I would have gotten the internship to begin with. And then a few months later I had gotten a phone call from the brand manager, which is the girl that I was working under, and she had told me that she found her dream job in fashion and that they were looking to replace her and that she had kept me in mind. So I went there, I took the job, she basically trained me in everything that she did and this is the part that I've struggled with filming up until now because she recently passed away Sorry She was super young, she was so motivating and she always believed in me and she taught me everything I know and I feel like I owe a very big part of my career to her she always believed in me, she always told me that I could do anything I wanted to do. She was there when I was brainstorming, creating my own website, and she just always told me to go for it. Fuck cancer. Anyway, she moved on to her new position, I took on the role, and I did the best that I could, and I think I was there for about a year. Then I moved on to another product development company, and I had a similar role where I was a brand manager, and I was creating a makeup line from scratch. That company was a little bit questionable. I think my boss was into like some sketchy shit. Didn't figure out his finances because the company ended up going under and I didn't even get to see my products sold online or on the shelves. So that was a little disappointing, but I almost feel like it was a blessing in disguise because once I left that company, I just sort of sat around and I thought about what I really wanted to do. And what I had really wanted to do from the very beginning was have my own website where I can post a lot of my work, where I can write articles, where I can make it look like an online magazine. And this was a dream of mine from when I was in school for marketing. While I was in school for marketing, I was still freelancing as much as I could. And I found that a lot of the clients that would sit down in my chair would ask me the same question. Questions. I had recurring questions like, I don't know how to apply false eyelashes, how do I do that? I don't know how to apply winged eyeliner, what kind of foundation should I use? I'm having skin issues, what do I do? So I started compiling a list of all the questions that I had gotten throughout my freelance career. And I started referring back to this list when my company bombed. And I was like, man, I should really try to build my own website. I mean, I learned about it in school, I know how to build a website now, I think I'm pretty good at advertising and I know how to create one. I understand all the software, why not just go for it, and what's the worst that can happen? So at this point, I was still freelancing, I was still working in retail, I still had contract jobs doing marketing here and there, and I would stay up every single night until the crack of dawn working on my website. And in December of 2011, the Beauty Vault was born. I had taken an idea that I had kicking around in my head for years and years and I followed through with it and I had something to show for it. I ended up making a Twitter account, I ended up making a Facebook page, and shockingly people were reading my website, which was so crazy. I have a very supportive group of friends, and obviously they totally hoard out my site to everybody that they knew. And as the site was getting more traffic, a lot of people started suggesting that I do videos because it's a lot easier to explain something in a video format than it is reading an article. And if you guys go to my website and look at some of my old articles, you'll notice that it looks like an online magazine. That's kind of been my style from the very beginning. So more and more people were telling me like, hey, your website's dope, but it would be super awesome if you did video. And I was like, man, I'm awkward. I don't think I could be in front of a camera and do that. Like, that's not really my jam. Do we remember broadcast journalism school? But eventually I caved and I ended up purchasing a camera on a 
whim, setting my camera up in this very room and awkwardly filming my first video where I was basically like, hey guys, I'm putting videos up on my website now, so give me your feedback and tell me what you want to see. Now when this all happened, I wasn't aware of the beauty community on YouTube. I actually had no idea that there were people on YouTube making videos. I was under the impression that YouTube was like Vimeo or Photobucket or some kind of platform for you to upload videos and share them with your friends. I had no idea that this was like a thing. So I started posting these videos and I started seeing people commenting on my videos and I was like, whoa, there's life out there. There are people watching and writing comments like this is weird. So after about my second video, I started doing hardcore research and figuring out what this YouTube situation was and I learned that people actually did this for a living and they made videos and it was a recurring thing and it was to be expected that people were to subscribe to me and write comments and give me thumbs up and down and write nasty shit. I just didn't know what I was signing up for when I first started. So I started incorporating videos onto my website and people were subscribing and it was this weird cool thing and I wanted to do it more and more so I continued to do it more and more and I was like all right I can get down with this we're gonna keep going about six months into YouTube I registered the beauty vault as a business continue to freelance continue to work on the website and also continued to work nine to five in the marketing industry so now you guys know how I started and how I got to where I am today and today I would say I have my own business I specialize in bridal glamour beauty and fashion I have my own website I do YouTube and I do still work in the marketing industry. Every once in a while, I'll go stir crazy working for myself and I will work in the marketing industry. So if you guys ever wonder like where the hell I am and how I could be so busy, it's because I have the busiest life in the league. I work nine to five, Monday to Friday. I come home from work. I hit the gym obviously for an hour because it keeps me sane. Then I either meet with clients or I work on YouTube. On the weekends, I'm always freelancing. I'm always doing photo shoots. I'm always doing YouTube. I'm always doing bridal. So I literally never stop working. Now you're probably wondering if I love the beauty industry and it's successful and I love what I'm doing, why would I go back to nine to five in the marketing industry? Well, I'm no spring chicken anymore. By the way, if you guys don't know, I'm 26. And I feel because I went to school for marketing communications that it's very important for me to keep my resume up to date and beefed up in that industry, just in case. One day I could lose this and this is the money maker. What happens if I lose my right hand? What am I gonna do? I need a backup plan, right? Maybe one day I'm gonna make lots of babies and I'm not gonna have time to freelance. I think it's good to have a backup plan. Maybe one day I'm gonna wake up and realize I absolutely hate lipstick. That would probably never happen. But let's just say one day I wake up and I decide I wanna be in a different industry for whatever reason. And I'm making this point because I feel like it's very important, even if you do get into makeup artistry, try to think outside the box and always think, what else could I be doing to differentiate myself from the next makeup artist. I don't mean to sound like a downer or like a granny telling you stay in school kids, but it's really valuable even in the beauty industry. Going to school and being a makeup artist is absolutely amazing. You actually don't have to go to makeup school to be a makeup artist, by the way. But aside from freelancing and working in retail, there is a whole other world of beauty that not a lot of people get involved in, and it's the business side, it's the marketing side, it's backstage, it's how do these products make it out on the shelves. There are so many jobs in the beauty industry, it's ridiculous. And many of those people in those roles might be really passionate about makeup, but just might have a degree in something and ended up in that position. And that could be your position. I'm just saying, explore your options and don't just narrow it down to, I wanna be a makeup artist, so I'm gonna go to school for it, and then I'm just gonna freelance forever. Because it's just nice to have options. Am I gonna stick to nine to five for much longer in the marketing industry? I can't give you a straight answer. Let's just say when I'm at work, I think about this. My heart and my soul lies in my business, it lies in beauty, it lies with my clients, YouTube, the website. I'm a hard ass, I love working for myself. I'm okay with taking direction, I'm good with having a boss and being told what to do, but when you've run your own ship for however long and you've had to make your decisions on your own and you're independent and you know what you're doing, it's a little bit hard to go back to an industry where you don't have that kind of control anymore. So we'll see how it goes. If anything, it's great experience, it's a resume builder, 
and I like to say that I've tried a little bit of everything. And in my life in particular, every little thing that I've done up until this point has helped the next step. Working in retail got me that internship. That internship got me a full-time job. That full-time job led to my other full-time job and so on and so forth. My boss being a shady asshole made me reevaluate my life and made the beauty vault happen. The beauty vault stemmed to YouTube. YouTube led to being able to reach out to thousands of people and making somewhat of a difference, I hope. So I think everything happens for a reason and right now this is just another page in my huge ass book. So now that I'm done story time, I think it's appropriate to get into some of your questions and give you some detailed answers. So question number one is, do you have to go to makeup school to become a makeup artist? And I know I touched on this a little bit because I told you that I went to makeup school, but I didn't give you my opinion of it and I didn't tell you if I think you should or you shouldn't. No, you do not have to go to makeup school to become a makeup artist. Some of the best makeup artists I know are self-taught. Some of them only went to school part-time. Some of them just worked in retail for a really long time and developed the skill. If you're the type of person who wants to get into TV and film or special effects and you want to work on movies and that's where your heart lies, I would definitely advise going to makeup school because it's a great resource. You're gonna work with makeup artists who have been on set and who know a thing or two and it's very hard to learn that kind of stuff on your own. But if you just want to do bridal, beauty, glamour, I don't think it's necessary to go into a full-time program unless you've never had experience applying makeup and you don't know color theory, have never held a makeup brush, and really need to start with the bare minimum, then I would advise maybe taking a part-time program, but I don't think makeup school is for everyone. Question number two is in the same ballpark as question number one, and it's, I want to become a makeup artist, but I can't afford to go to makeup school. What do I do? Makeup school can be very costly and sometimes is not even worth your money. If you really want to be a makeup artist and you can't afford it, I would recommend going into retail and maybe trying to get a job at a counter. Now, I know managers at counters can be really snobby and unless your resume states that you've gone to makeup school, they won't even look at you. And I know this from experience because until my resume had said that I had gone to school for makeup, it was very hard for me to get a job at a counter. I would say beef up your resume and say that you're an aspiring makeup artist, maybe even embellish a little bit and say that you're freelancing on your own and you're just very eager and willing to learn and even offer to do some kind of makeup test to show them that you have the basis to do great things on someone's face. Working at a counter and working in retail is one of the best experiences I've ever had because I learned about a vast variety of products different brands, I had different people sitting in my makeup chair every single day of different ages, eyelid shapes, pigmentation, even people with skin conditions which could be a little bit difficult sometimes but it's awesome practice. So I would say if you can't afford to go to makeup school, just do it on your own, honestly. Practice, 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 use everybody that you know as a guinea pig and try to get work for a counter. The next question is, do I have to go to the most expensive makeup school to make it? Does the reputation help? This is something I'm very passionate about because I find a lot of people get suckered into paying a shitload of money for nothing. I was one of those people and I'm not going to disclose where I went to school but I think it's very obvious where I went to school. I paid a lot of money to go to makeup school and I feel like up until this point in my career I have been fully responsible for my career and for my success and I don't don't think the school that I went to helped in the least. I went to school and I already had an inclination towards makeup so I kind of knew my way around makeup brushes and people's faces, different eye shapes, etc, etc. I find that oftentimes world-renowned or super expensive makeup schools are just a title. And you can take this how you want, I'm just trying to be real with you guys and give you honest sound advice. Oftentimes people pay an arm and a leg to go to makeup school and they're hyped, they're pumped up, they hear what they want to hear. You're going to do amazing. You're going to be a celebrity makeup artist. You're going to be in Hollywood. You're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. Chances are you're going to be in control of your future and those things will not be handed to you. And this is a huge reason why I went back to school after I took makeup artistry because I wanted other options and I wanted to do well. I didn't want anybody to be in control of where my career went. There are so many community colleges that even offer makeup artistry courses. There are part-time courses. There are pay-as-you-go courses. With the internet and YouTube, there are so many amazing resources out there that you just need 
to utilize for free that I don't think it's necessary to go to an expensive makeup school, especially if you have heart. If it's in your heart and you're passionate about it, you're gonna find a way to do well at it. And no diploma from some fancy makeup school is going to replace that passion. It's just a name, it's just gonna be thrown on your resume, and it is absolutely zero compared to your passion. I just really care about you guys, and I don't want you to invest your time or money in the wrong places when there are so many different options out there. This is a good one. What do you love about your work and what are the cons? I love meeting new people. I love being able to make women feel good about themselves. I've had a few clients sit in my chair, spin around, look in the mirror and start crying. And it made me cry because they felt like they were unrecognizable and I don't think they ever really saw themselves in that light before. All I did was enhance the beauty that already existed. But it's a really cool, overwhelming feeling to make somebody else feel that way. I love my work because I feel like it led me to where I am today and led me to you guys, which honestly means the world to me. And it's just cool to know that I can inspire, motivate, teach a thing or two. I guess the only con I have with my work is when I'm fully self-employed, sometimes I just get kind of lonely. Having a small business and working for yourself and freelancing full-time and doing YouTube by yourself and working on the website by yourself can get a little bit lonely. You almost start going a little stir-crazy sometimes sometimes because you don't have co-workers, it's not like you can go out for lunch with someone. And that's a big reason why I like to switch it up once in a while and work 9 to 5 because I find a lot of my good friends I've made through full-time jobs. But as long as I surround myself with awesome friends and family, I like to give myself days off once in a while and actually like let loose. That's probably the only con, I can't think of anything. I love what I do. This is also a great question. When you started, how did you get clients or did you work in a salon? How did you find your clients? When I first started, I was much like anybody that started. Super confused, no idea what to do, how to make money, how are we gonna do this? And don't have the mindset of I need to do this to make money. What you love doing just happens to generate income, which everybody wants. Everybody wants to do what they love and just happen to make money from it. Let's be real. So when I first started, obviously it was a struggle. I was in retail and sometimes I would have repeat customers and it was a little awkward like writing down my information for them to hire me outside of work. So what I did is I designed and made my own business cards and myself along with everybody in my life that loves me and cares for me and wants me to do well, poured those things out like nobody's business. And that's what everybody in your life should do. You should give a stack of business cards to everybody who you know, who's friends with you, who's related to you. I unfortunately don't have very much family in Canada. I just have my parents, my sister-in-law, my brother, and my niece. But I do have a very supportive group of friends, so I gave them each a stack of my business cards and they handed that shit out to anybody who even had mascara on. Anytime the topic of makeup comes up, you hand out your business card. Shameless self-promotion is gonna get you very far, especially at the very beginning. And if anybody's judging you or has something to say, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life anyway. If you can invest a little bit of money into a website, I would highly recommend it. You should start a Facebook page. You should start a Twitter account. Social media is the future. You need to get yourself onto social media and talk about relevant topics, post photos of your work, get an Instagram account. You got to hustle, girlfriend. Life of an entrepreneur. Donald Trump, is that you? Next question, can you tell me how you get frequent jobs? I have been super lucky and I have had really awesome clients in the past that have referred me to everybody that they know. I've never paid for marketing or advertising anywhere. I've just been lucky enough to know people that need a makeup artist. I have some friends in the industry, but not really. I think I know maybe a handful of makeup artists. So if they can't do a gig, they'll refer me, but mostly it's through word of mouth and my reputation. The photographers that I work with will refer me. So it's usually just sort of shameless self-promotion and word of mouth from past clients or people that I work with regularly. Have you ever had any nightmare clients? And if so, how have you dealt with them? Again, I've been really, really lucky and I hope I'm not jinxing this, but I've never had a nightmare client. I've had some cranky like bridesmaids or wedding parties because it was really early and they had some beef with the bride so they kind of took it out on me. I just kill them with kindness. I'm a people person and I love chatting people up and although I'm not a total girly girl, if I sense that a girl's got a chip on her shoulder, I'll just kill 
kill her with kindness and then she feels like an asshole and then she's forced to be nice to me. It's like being mean to a little puppy. How can you do that? If you do find yourself in the situation where you have a really terrible client, I would just be super professional about it and don't let it get to you because at the end of the day, they're paying you to be there and you're gonna leave with a nice paycheck. The trouble isn't usually with clients that you know and love that you have in your makeup chair who you've established some kind of a relationship with. It usually happens when you go to like a random gig or like a photo shoot and you're called last minute and you're dealing with these girls who think they're Tyra Banks and they ask you to go get their water but you're the makeup artist and then you just have to very respectfully put them in their place and let them know what your job is and that you're not their waitress or servant or assistant. I've had to do that a couple times and although I don't enjoy doing it, unless you're a celebrity showcasing model and this gig determines the rest of my makeup career, it's not going to go down like that with me. It's just a matter of being respectful and knowing that you're both there to work and you need to work together in order for this photo shoot to go well and just establishing where you stand and what your role is and being professional about it. Because you're on YouTube, you sometimes get negative comments. How do you deal with it? To be totally honest with you, I find it kind of funny. I'll be laying in bed with one eye open, I'll get an email, and it'll be some kind of dumb, unthought out insult, and I'll just screenshot it and send it to one of my friends and laugh. You can't let that kind of stuff get to you. If it's really bad, I'll read it and then I'll delete it. That's pretty much as far as I go with negative comments. If you're thinking about starting YouTube and you're scared of starting YouTube because of the negative comments, don't. If you have that mentality, you might as well just not ever leave your house because no matter what you do, no matter what you say, there's always going to be one person who hates your guts. And that's life. Who cares? If somebody has a problem with you, that's their problem. That's not your problem. And if someone's biggest problem that day in their life is how you applied that lipstick or how you worded that sentence and they feel the need to shit inside your soul and let you know that you're a terrible person and you're stupid for saying that or you're ugly or you're monotone, yet they still continue to watch every single one of your videos, then girl, they got bigger problems than you. Trust me. That's the weird and creepy part when somebody just like hates your guts but continues to watch your videos. Like that's questionable. That's kind of a red flag for sanity, no? Next thing you know, you're gonna show up outside my house, put a bag on my head, skin me and wear me like last year's Prada. Step away from the keyboard, girlfriend. So that's my answer. Just brush it off, ignore it, and move on with your life. A lot of these people don't realize that life isn't like a guarantee. Anything could happen at any moment. You could die tomorrow. Literally, you could die tomorrow. Holding on to that stuff or letting a complete stranger dictate your feelings for that day is just a waste of life for me. In the grand scheme of life and things that matter, that's like below negatives in my book. And that's about as far as I'm gonna talk about the whole haters thing in general because it's just not worth my life. Ain't nobody got time for that and remember this is the chill zone. We keep things chill around here. How do I take my love for makeup and make it into a business? This sort of stems back to what I was saying about going to makeup school. Whether or not you need to go to makeup school if I think that you could be self-taught. The one thing that I would advise for anybody who wants to take their love for makeup and their love for freelancing and really make it into a business is to make Maybe consider taking some part-time business courses, maybe a couple marketing courses, anything that will give you another perspective to owning your own business. Because a lot of people don't realize all the work and all of the time that actually goes into having your own business and making earnings off of it and understanding how to do marketing for themselves and understand how to promote themselves and how big of a part social media plays. Little things like that, although we don't ever think about them, make the world of a difference when it comes to a small business. The internet is the future, it's unavoidable, you need to learn how to market yourself, you need to learn the business side of things, how to charge people, how to do your taxes, how to register your business, how to register the name, how to have your own website. So if you have a natural talent for makeup and you think that you could make a business out of it and you feel confident in your skills but you just don't know what to do, I would honestly highly advise maybe taking a couple courses either in business or marketing or something as specialized as New Business Owner 101. Most colleges will totally offer small business courses or programs, even in night school. Again, if you love it and this is your passion and this is what you see yourself doing, you will totally invest your time and money into it. Nothing bad ever comes out of learning and expanding your knowledge. I do it every day. I'm constantly learning. Whether it be in marketing, whether it be in business, whether it be from other makeup artists, I'm like a sponge. 
So I hope that answers your question. So my last question is a detailed one, and it's one that I wanted to answer for a while, and I hope she doesn't mind me sort of reading this, but basically she's saying she's going to college, she's majoring in PR and advertising, she's trying to figure out a way to make money from the beauty industry, and she can't figure out how to get started because she doesn't have formal makeup training, and she's been trying to get a job at the counter for about a year now, and nobody's biting. So what should she do? Number one, you had me when you said you're majoring in PR and advertising. This tells me that you furthered your education and there is a huge opportunity for you to work in the beauty industry and do PR and advertising. I would suggest starting a blog and just writing about the things that you like. Because you have PR and advertising experience, you probably have strong writing skills. Then I would just say beef up your resume, put on there that you write a beauty blog, you're an aspiring makeup artist going to school for PR and advertising, and just embellish things. Honestly, these counters are really hard to crack and they can be a little bit chachi and selective of who they hire if they don't go to makeup school, which half the time honestly is their own loss, but embellish your resume, start practicing on everybody you know, tell them you're willing to do a makeup test if they want, but above all of those things, start your own blog. It can be extremely inexpensive to do, I think you can even do it for free now. It could be a great creative outlet for you, it can get your name out there, you can put it on your resume, you can have something to show for your passion for the makeup industry. Those are my suggestions, but I think you'll be alright. Another little mini story that I have for you kind of coincides with some of the questions that I was asked regarding my passion for YouTube and my passion for my website and my passion for freelance. When I was in marketing school, my goal in life was to work for the biggest makeup companies in their marketing department. L'Oreal was always a really big one for me. I wanted to work at their headquarters. I wanted to be in the marketing department. I wanted to do product development. And that was kind of what I had in mind when I was in product development. And L'Oreal, by the way, is just an example, but I would have wanted to work in product development for many companies. So fast forward two or three years after I graduated BCIT. The beautyvault.ca was up. I started making videos. I was fully freelancing. I was totally happy. My resume was online so anybody could actually access it. I was applying for product development jobs because I was trying to achieve my dream job at the time which was working for a huge company in marketing and several times I was presented with my dream job. Now these types of jobs in Vancouver specifically are very rare. If I were to move to Toronto, New York or any sort of fashion capital I wouldn't have that hard of a time finding this dream job of mine. So anyway they were presented to me. I had interviewed for a bunch. The interviews went spectacular. I was so amped, I was ready to take these jobs, and then obviously all it takes is a Google search and you can find my website, you can find my YouTube, you can find any work that I've done. So these job offers were presented to me and I almost crapped my pants with excitement. But within these job offers, there was a fine line that had stated in so many words that I would have to choose between the website, freelancing, and YouTube, and taking my dream job and working for this one company. Company. And this has happened on several occasions, by the way. I guess with having a website and being on YouTube and discussing different products from different brands, there's always that conflict of interest. And this is the part where I'm keeping it 100. No brand is going to hire you and allow you to promote other brands and other products. Which, fine, I understand, but I think it was a hard pill for me to swallow. And although I would busted my ass and finally these dream jobs with amazing salaries and benefits and promise were presented to me and although the beauty vault was so small it was like a little tiny fish in a huge pond and I think I had no more than a hundred subscribers I was still freelancing like crazy but I wouldn't really say that I was like ballin entrepreneur in me could not abandon something that I felt had so much potential for this amazing opportunity so I had to say no I said no to dream jobs on more than one occasion so that I could do what I'm doing right now so that I could tweet my opinions and I could have my own Facebook page and I can talk about products that I love so that I could have a voice so anytime I get the odd shithead in the comments being like "Eh, you're so monotone you don't even want to be here I'm like, girl, you don't even know how much I want to be here. Take a seat. 
The last time this happened to me was about a year ago and I can confidently say today that I'm so glad I made that decision and I didn't abandon my little dream, my little channel, my little website, my little business because it makes me happy. So there are a ton of other questions but I'm pretty sure my memory card is going to run out of space because I've been going on for about an hour and a half now. I truly and honestly hope that this video has been helpful to at least one of you. I really tried to share as much of my personal experiences with you and guide you in some way. I never had anybody there for me. I'm here to help you guys in any way that I possibly can. I may be blunt and realistic, but it's because I've gone through some hard times as a makeup artist, and I wasn't making very much money at the beginning, to be honest, and you probably won't. And that's what's going to separate people who are truly passionate about this industry and those who just want the glamorized lifestyle that they see in the media. And trust me, a lot of it is not glamorous. It's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of hustling, it's a lot of self-promotion, it's a lot of not making money for a while. But if you stick with it, I promise it will be worth it in the end. I feel like this was a good video for you guys to learn a little bit more about me, what my life is like, why I say some of the things that I do on YouTube when it comes to certain products. When I look at a product, I look at it not only as a consumer, but I use my marketing and product development brain to figure out the packaging, the price of it, why I should pay that price, is it worth that price, should it be a part of my life, and so on and so forth. And as for the future, honestly, at this point in time, I'm only about 40% where I want to be in my career. I have a long way to go until I have my dream occupation. Long term, I would love to have my own studio where I do photo shoots with my photographer. That's something that we always talk about. I guess with my product development experience, it wouldn't be too shabby having a line of my own or something of my own considering I've gone through the motions before and I feel like I kind of get it. So I don't know, I guess we'll see, but I'm glad you guys are here to watch me along the way. Really appreciate it and honestly your support makes me want to do what I'm doing and makes the struggle sometimes totally worth it. So thank you. So if you guys have any other questions regarding freelance, the industry, my experience, anything to do with makeup artistry, please leave these questions in the comments below because I'm going to be using them for my next Next video. And just in case this comes up, the makeup that I have on right now is actually the same makeup from my bombshell makeup tutorial, which I will link in the description box below. Thank you guys very much for all of your questions, all of your emails, all of your support, for watching this video, for sticking with me. It truly means the world to me. You actually have no idea. I love you very much. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!